Poet Louise Gluck wins this year's Nobel Prize for Literature. Fashion pioneer Kenzo Takada takes a final bow. And Marjan Satrapi shows off another facet of her unique artistic style. That's all coming up in today's show. Louise Gluck is this year's Nobel Prize winner for Literature. The American author was applauded for her humour and her biting wit by the judges, who also highlighted the universal nature of her writing. Gluck was the United States Poet Laureate in 2003 and is also a Pulitzer Prize winner. Here's Peter O'Brien with an extract from one of her poems. When awarding Louise Glick the 2020 Nobel Prize in Literature, the committee mentioned the austere beauty of her work. But death must come to them differently, so close to the beginning, as though they had always been blind and weightless. Loss, trauma, sex, family, mythology, all major themes for Glick, who made her debut in 1968 and over a decades long career became an icon of contemporary American poetry. Louise Glick's voice is unmistakable. It is candid and uncompromising and it signals that this poet wants to be understood. But it is also a voice full of humour and biting wit. Now Professor of English at Yale, Glick had already been a Pulitzer Prize winner and US Poet Laureate when she was awarded the National Medal of Arts and Humanities by then President Barack Obama. Her Nobel Prize follows a series of controversies for the Swedish Academy in recent years, with contentious choices for the Literature Award and a sexual assault scandal which led to a major overhaul of its membership. He brought pioneering, rule-breaking style to the Paris catwalks in the 1970s and left his colourful mark on fashion for 50 years. Japanese designer Kenzo Takada has died at age 81. Tributes have been pouring in for a creative force whose sense of fun revolutionised the catwalk and whose wide sleeves and unstructured forms brought a Japanese silhouette to European apparel. Yinka Oyatade takes a look back at his life. He is famed for bringing Japanese fashion to a global stage. Kenzo Takada, the founder of the brand Kenzo, died in the French capital aged 81. He is known for his exuberant floral and jungle-infused prints. It's an aesthetic that would go on to become the signature of the fashion house. I'm very, very happy now. Uh, they, I think they, they bring uh, a lot of uh, youngness, fresh, fresher, uh, I'm very happy. Tributes have poured in for Kenzo Takada, and Hidalgo, mayor of Paris, said the capital is mourning one of its sons. But the designer never intended to make the city of light his home. He was born in Hyogo Prefecture in Japan on the 27th of February 1939. After studying at the Bonka College of Fashion in Tokyo, Kenzo decided to pack up and travel to France by boat in 1965. What he planned to be a six-month stay turned into 56 years, during which he upended the fashion world. After his first show in the 70s using just cotton to make his creations, he became famous almost overnight. By the 80s, Kenzo became known all over the world. Later on in his career, he started to branch out, designing costumes for the opera and uniforms for the Olympics. Well, her graphic novel Persepolis and its wide-eyed protagonist introduced Marjan Satrapi to a worldwide audience, and its film adaptation was even nominated for an Oscar. Yet this author, illustrator and director is also an accomplished painter. Her work's now on show here in Paris at the Françoise Livinec Gallery. Catherine Kadir Clifford takes a look at an exhibition that mirrors the artist in question. <laughs> Large, colourful canvases featuring women with red lips and black hair. Women who resemble Marjan Satrapi herself. Fans of the Franco-Iranian artist's illustrations will recognise a similar style. She says her greatest goal in painting is to touch individuals. I like to do real painting. My goal in life, and it's not a very popular goal. I'm not into concepts or denunciation or anything like that. I want to, kind of like Asian painters, serve the public. I want to create beauty. Satrapi is famous for her films and graphic novels, such as Persepolis, 
an autobiographical story about growing up in post-revolution Iran. But she started out her career as a painter. She says it's a need she always returns to after her other projects. It's something continuous. I think my mental health depends on it. I need to completely isolate myself from the world and to be with my canvases, with my paintings, and do what I want to do. None of the canvases on display feature men. The artist says she prefers to paint honest, ferocious women. Though she doesn't hesitate to speak her mind when it comes to feminism, Satrapi says she's against destructive, radical forms of activism. I think we need to be feminist by facts, and being feminist by facts means that we do things and by our actions we show what we are capable of. If I show that I know how to do things just as well as or even better than a man, then I've won the battle and I can be an example for the girl who will come after me. The 16 paintings by Marjan Satrapi will be on display at the Françoise Livnec Gallery in Paris until the 28th of November. Well, they're part of the furniture here in Paris and no less charming for it. The booksellers on the banks of the River Seine are an institution and much loved by residents of the French capital. But like hundreds of thousands of small businesses across the globe, they too are feeling the pinch of the economic crisis sparked by the coronavirus. The booksellers known as bouquinistes depend heavily on tourists and with European borders closed and inter-European travel at a minimum, their jobs are on the line. Wassim Cornet has the story. They are one of Paris's most iconic and most treasured features and anyone who has strolled along the Seine has seen them and some have even bought something from them. In fact, the bouquinistes, the booksellers that line the river for three kilometers, are such an important part of the city's history that they are declared a part of France's national intangible heritage. But as is the case around the world, tourism in the French capital has screeched to a halt, and that has had a severe impact on Paris's bouquinistes. Jérôme Calais has been doing the job for almost 30 years, one of the city's 227 booksellers who sell second-hand books, old magazines and engravings along the river. He says life on the riverbank is a bit like a drug. But sales have plummeted and these days he worries about how many colleagues may never reopen their bookshelves. L'impact du Covid sur notre profession, c'est très simple. Une majorité de mes collègues vivaient pour beaucoup au jour le jour de la vente, c'est-à-dire que c'était ça garantissait le sandwich, voire un petit peu plus. Despite the downturn, Jérôme says he'll keep doing his job. Nulle part au monde, vous n'avez une librairie à ciel ouvert de cette importance, avec autant de libraires, autant de surfaces occupées, autant de livres proposés. C'est vraiment une chose qui n'existe qu'à Paris. And for that reason alone, the people behind these symbols of Paris's riverbanks hope book lovers from around the world can soon return to the city of lights. And finally, we're wrapping up the show with one of the world's most resilient cultural scenes. Lebanon's cinema continues to flourish amid conflict, tragedy and political upheaval. Now that rich output's being celebrated for the first time with a dedicated festival here in Paris. You can catch the best in Lebanese film at the Lincoln Cinema until October 11th. We'll leave you with a taste of what's on offer. Do remember you can get more arts and culture on our website and on our social media channels too. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this.